Hi everyone, Neuralnar here, and today I'm going to show you a quick tip on testing ignition on vehicles. Why? Well, because my car has a problem. This is a 1991 vehicle Sabre. I've shown this in a few other videos. And I started it up a few mornings ago, and it had a terrible miss. I'm pretty sure it was running on four cylinders. It does this occasionally, but it always goes away after a few seconds. This time, it did not go away. So, it's time to figure out what's wrong. Now, I had long thought that it was just plug wires, because these plug wires are old, and they are kind of cheap when I bought them, and uh, yeah, don't buy cheap plug wires. Bad idea. And also the spark plugs probably could be replaced. I pulled a couple of them and checked them a year or so ago, and they looked all right. Not perfect, but in any case, this seemed to be a pretty bad miss. Two of the cylinders were not firing properly. And this particular vehicle has a waste spark system. So here's the ignition coil. This particular one is a 3800 pre-series one. So it has this single block uh, with the uh, three coils on top and the ignition module beneath. And these have some multiple common issues that I won't get into here with corrosion and whatnot. But uh, in this case, it seemed like two of the cylinders weren't firing. As I said, this is a waste spark system. So one coil for two plugs. This coil fires these two plugs, this one fires these two, and you only have to fire each cylinder once every other revolution, of course, because that's how four-cycle engines work, but this one fires both of these at the same time every revolution. So that's why it's a waste spark, because one spark is wasted. Not really a big issue, a little bit of extra power draw, and that's about it. So I want to test this and figure out what's wrong, but I do not have an ignition tester. So I need some way of testing for a spark. Now, Hmm, I wonder what I could use that sparks that I can use to test a spark. How about a spark plug? So, yeah, it's a pretty easy test here. Now, there's a few ways that you can can uh, can check this sort of stuff. The proper way is to get a spark tester. I don't have one, and you really don't need one for much of anything. Uh, unless you have a carbureted vehicle and you have to adjust timing or something. But, in this case, I could uh, pull off... Uh, one of these wires because it is a waste spark system and just to see if the vehicle runs rougher or not. For example, if this coil is bad and I pull off this wire, it'll still run exactly the same. Don't do it while it's running, could uh, zap yourself. But I could pull this off and see if it runs rougher or not, but it's kind of difficult to tell because four cylinders versus three, there's not much difference. So that's not a great way. I could go under here, unplug the uh, fuel injection on the cylinders that correspond to uh, these because then they won't fire also with no fuel and see where it runs rougher or not. But I want to actually test it directly to know if I have a shorted plug wire because they're bad or a shorted spark plug or some other issue. So I just want to know if my suspicion is right that one of these three ignition coils is bad, which is what I suspect. And uh, on a vehicle this old, most likely I'll just replace this whole module. You can probably pick it up for 15 bucks at a junkyard. So. It's really not worth troubleshooting whether it's a bad ground or a bad ignition control module or a bad coil or or whatnot. Just replace the whole darn thing, right? So in any case, if I pull off both of these to disable this coil, if this coil is still good, then I could damage the coil because it, the uh, uh, magnetic field has no place to go but back into the ignition control module, and that's really hard on it. So you don't ever want to just pull off the plug wire. Uh, to keep this video from getting too long, I just want to show what I'm doing here. So basically, I have a spark plug, and I just vice gripped it to something that was grounded. And I just take this wire here, clip it on to the uh, electrode of the spark plug, and pop off a plug wire, I'll pop off this one, and clip it on here. There we go. Ooh, don't let that go down into the engine belt. Alright, so now I just disconnected one of my cylinders and ran it up to the spark plug that's grounded. So all I have to do is start my vehicle and look for a spark. If it sparks, then this coil is good and this plug should be firing. Unless, of course, my wire is bad, but that's not what I'm testing here. And uh, I can just go through here and see which ones are firing and which ones aren't. If it's a bad coil, then I should be able to see that, for example, these two don't fire, but these two do and these two do. Likewise, if all of them but one seem to fire, then I have a shorted plug wire or a shorted plug or something. So, 
Now I already know what the problem is because I already went through this. It only took me like five minutes, but this coil is bad. So neither of these fire, all of the rest do. If I pull them off one at a time and go all the way around. So I'm just going to quick show you what this looks like. It's uh, pretty obvious. You just look for a spark, but I'm going to start it up and show you what I mean here. Now this wire is not rated for 10 kilovolts like a spark plug wire is, but it's irrelevant. Just keep it away from anything metal and uh, you could use a bare wire. It doesn't even have to be insulated. So plug is grounded. It's all good. I'm not putting extra stress on any of these coils, which doesn't matter anymore because they're getting thrown in the garbage, but I'll uh, show you this one, which does fire. Then I'll move it to this one, which does not fire. because, well, it's running on three cylinders right now. So now I'll put that one back on and move it over to the other coil, one of the two plugs in the other coil. The engine will run a little bit smoother, but there will be no spark, which is the best indicator. Now, why did it go bad in the first place? Well, it could be that the gap was too large or there was a open and a couple of the plug wires that stressed the coil until it failed, but it's been doing this for a long time intermittently and I'm pretty sure it's just a corrosion issue or uh, just a coil failure from being a quarter million miles in uh, 22 years. So, not too surprising, it happens sometimes. So I'm just gonna go get a replacement module, bolt it on and that should fix my problem. One thing to mention here is that if you drive a vehicle in a condition like this, the oxygen sensor sees that there is plenty of oxygen in the gas because two of the cylinders aren't burning any of it. So it keeps making your fuel richer and richer and uh, you get way too much fuel. That fuel gets dumped into your exhaust system, runs through your catalytic converter and overheats it and you destroy your catalytic converter. So you're not just wasting fuel driving it this way and having a, a slow chugging vehicle. Uh, you're also going to do some additional damage to it. So it's good to get this fixed immediately rather than driving it and uh, breaking it further. Then again, this is the car. Now, I happen to like this one, but most people just call it a piece of junk. So you could just run this thing till it dies this way, which wouldn't be very long, but I would rather spend my 15 bucks and fix it and just keep driving it. But that's me. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, update here. I did a little bit more investigation here and I found something. Here is the coil pack once again. There are six screws holding the coils onto the ignition module underneath. And uh, some of those screws broke off rather than coming out because they've been there a long time and they really like where they are. But I hammered on this with a dead blow hammer until it uh, finally broke loose. And if I pull this up slowly, you can see what is actually underneath. They have some insulating goo, which uh, all flowed down to the bottom over time apparently, but the bottom half here is the ignition module. The top half are just the coils. And you can see that the coils are held on with these low voltage wires. And I noticed that this one was loose. So I plugged it back on, started the car up, and it runs perfectly. So the best thing to do here would be to uh, just go to the junkyard and replace this entire assembly, like I said earlier. However, I, uh, I think I'm just going to recrimp this, clear out all the corrosion, um, and reassemble it and hope that it works. I'll just drive it locally for the next few months until winter, and uh, by then I should have enough confidence to take it anywhere I want again. So. I believe in this case it was just a bad connection here on the low voltage side between the coil and the ignition module, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you can see that all the, the goo flowed to the bottom. There's no goo left on top. I'm sure goo isn't the right word, but 
you know, that's what it is. Goo. Sticky gook. And uh, there is no uh, environmental protection left, so these kind of corroded. Got loose over time and no longer work properly. It rattled around every once in a while and make a connection again, which is what happened after I started the vehicle, apparently. This last time, they were finally corroded enough that they no longer did. So, I could repop this thing with some corrosion-resistant material again, but uh, I think I'm just going to clean all these contacts up quite well, recrimp them so they're nice and snug, reassemble it, and go on my merry way. So there you have it. The ignition module in my car failed, and it was just a bad crimp. So, I'm just going to recrimp that, and hopefully that's the only problem. It's also possible that hammering on the ignition module to get it loose uh, kind of uh, fixed it temporarily. That's a possibility, but I'm pretty sure it's just that connection. So, I am just going to do this, and hopefully I have a $0 fix. My car seems to run just fine again, at least in my garage. So, thanks for watching.